Okay, look, this is uh, how we do the Bible, the Bible of history. Look to this video. This is one of my nations. I decided to go to do the uh, FDA and the American Constitution. I think they've done the same thing. Went to the US and come back with pain, confusion, etc. This is the video of your operation. Look here. This is the Bible. What's wrong here? The patient, the surgeon used the double cup, aggressive shield. This is not gently for doctor. And look, the surgery is more than maybe 40 minutes, one hour. And again, he used a paper. Look here. Radio frequency of data. Perning, 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 thin point, perning, thin point. So this surgery was about maybe 40 minutes, perning and damaging the heart. Now, do no more harm. So it was wrong decision and wrong thing. But the other stability should not be treated by a prostate alone. Now, this is a time of my surgery block, very damaged cartilage, the bone is called very poor type of cartilage, with the part of my contraction and the uh, the uh, stabilization surgery. Look, this is what we do, what we use technique, very simple. Here is the patient of root tear. Here, look, look here to the lesion. We use the single cut, smooth shaver, and be very gentle, very superficial with the cartilage. And when we use the paper, we don't touch the cartilage, just thermal shrinkage. Look here, just look to shrinkage of the cartilage. Look at shrinkage of the frayed cartilage. Just shrinkage without touching the uh, cartilage. So don't bear, don't touch, and don't bear the cartilage. So it was five minutes to deprive and do heat compress. There was there 14 to 60 minutes unnecessary work of bearing of the cartilage. So don't touch the cartilage, don't bear the cartilage. Now, for cartilage fusion, we do either the primary and magnet fracture, or if you know that, or we do odds. Now, to do odds, we have postcondral autograph transfer. There should be large lesion or unhealthy subcondral growth. Now, this is a case. He has previous, uh, he has condral lesion like this, and he has previous osteochondral lesion and previous meniscectomy. And this is look, what happens if you do meniscectomy? There is overload on the medial side and separation of osteochondral part. What else? We do alignment, and here he has good alignment, mild virus, which is good for the lateral side, always check alignment. And here, look at your deficient dominances. So, what to do? Osteotomy only because he has already virus mild alignment. And what to do for the lesion? Looks deep lesion, unhealthy bone, so the best decision is to do. Auto uh, osteochondral autograph. I'll go fast through this. How to do the technique? Uh, arthroscopic is, I think, more precise than the open technique because you can uh, see everything and uh, also to uh, define the orientation because the graph is oblique, so you can decide, rotate, and decide which surface matching which side of the articular surface. Here, this is the most critical step in the procedure when you hammer it. And look here, the defect. Look here, this is, was the bone defect. With, so we place the cartilage at the bone, measuring, and so on. So go fast. Now, this is uh, now micro fracture of the lesion. And here, the patient is three months after the operation. But what's about the patient's expectation? He has lateral osteoarthrosis, he has deficient penises. So he came back after two years complaining of this is five months, it's will really heal two years came back with pain. And we did MRI, look here, to the integration of the osteochondral graph. Looks good, look to the surface. But still he has some pain, which is much less than before, but because of the osteoarthrosis, which already discussed with him that you may have pain in the future. And he was treated conservatively. Now another case, medial side, and I, I put this uh, photo to see how the teamwork and how it is very precise to keep look how everyone concentrated on this. And I use for these cases the electrical recorder. I think no one have it in your yeah? 
things in here. This is, I use it in postsecondary open draft transfer because sometimes you go more posterior. So any movement during plugging the, the draft may fracture it. I use it in India, but in construction totally, and also in ACL, I'm not sure it. This is we can do open technique. This patient come from outside Jordan. He had a two micro fracture surgery in very famous place in the middle, and failed. Why? Why failed? This is the shame Failure because the subchondral bone is diseased. So subchondral bone disease, don't do micro fracture. You don't replace it. You do replace the bone, postural bones. You see, it is diseased. So what we have done, open uh, osteoclonal drug transfer, and you see here how it's moving, unstable fiber count. So here, the message that, is look how it's well integrated here, here, this is after a few months, and well integrated, congruent with the surface. And here the patient after six months, has no pain or minimal pain sometimes, and has good range of motion. So the message is that when the subcontrol bone is diseased, you don't do microfracture. You have to do the osteochondral uh, transfer. So this is another case of osteochondral dissonance, where the subcontrol bone here in the MRI, there is fluid behind it, but still the subcontrol bone is good. So what to do? To do autograft or to do fixation. So we tried with the fixation because there was a good, here you see, a good bone in the right. So we did the refresh, realign, and you see how, how large is the region. And then the refreshment using, again, chamber, using curate, and using, again, chamber for the membrane and micro fracture. And then after that fixation by wire, and you see the setup here, look, look to the T4. So very fast or or our start, look to the team work how all of them cooperative, they know what to do, they know the steps, they save time, they make our life and our work easier. Now, fixation here of the first wire, then define where to put the second wire, again here, progression of the wire, first screw, second screw. And now this is after finish. Now what we do? these cases, and even in osteochondral autograph transfer, we check for any impediment. But here, we take the lead to the arc of motion and see if any impediment is for some of the positive or positive. So here, post -op, here after a few months, when healed, and this is on screw removal. Look how it is very well healed and integrated. And this is, I, I advise the patient always to remove these uh, screws. And look here the screwdriver and here the screws are. So when the subcontrol bone is not diseased, don't remove it. Okay, you can fix it. Now this is we use arthroscopy also on uh, osteochondral fracture fixation. This is not a condyle fracture. Again the same technique and here this way. Use the scope. I think this is very not well done surgery. Mild alignment in both sides and he's young present to me with pain and pulse. The problem in this is that it is intra-articular deformity. The medial side is present, and this is almost should have patterson for this fragment. So what to do? The problem is it is healed. It is healed, you see here. And what to do? So we have to refracture it and then fix it. And the question is how to go through the articular part without promotion of the osteochrome or whatever in healthy area. So what we did, arthroscopic assistant, progress the wire, follow the wire by chisel, and then re reduction and fixation. Now, come back and compare. Now, arthroscopic assist articular fracture. This is the present fracture. We use, again, arthroscopic techniques to elevate the articular fragment. You see how it's depressed here after gradual elevation. And then, also, fluoroscopic assisted, reduced, fixed, and now here, uh, injection of calcium phosphate cement this is not one cement, but calcium phosphate. And you see, after after injection of this, we check if there is any decrease in cement. And here the result look: excellent reduction of articular surface, airway function, and we allow them for pain away to So proper techniques, proper reductions, airway fixation, allow patients for airway to Even geometry, 
Uh, we have modified some techniques in the ASML and MBFL uh, reconstruction, and we are more using the augmented repair technique. And this is very important. I'll show you a case where there is a posterior relief location, and I didn't use any ligament reconstruction, and the result I'll show you. So this is very important as a concept to use the augmented repair technique. Now, we use uh, take care of associated injuries in ACL reconstruction, but also the alignment. No modified relevance, modified technique to prevent middle activities, and also we do extra fixation uh, technique in all the slide technique. And also uh, we have a draft handling protocol to prevent infection or to decrease the risk of infection. And we, success, we were successful with that. Uh, associated injuries, the most important ramp and reverse ramp lesion. And this is a case where We did ACL and there was a reverse ramp. Always when you do ACL, you go to the posterior knee to see if there is a ramp or reverse. It's more common than you think. It may reach up to 20, 21 person. One in five cases, in, uh, one in each five. So you have to take care. What we do also, again, posterior lateral border, we pass the sutures. And again, we check alignment of the meniscus. We should, like in rotator cuff, you have to keep it aligned not in improper tension. After we check the alignment, we pass the sutures. In this case, we can repair from anterior portal because the ACL is already is not there. And here, this is ALL because this patient has high body position, ligament dyslexity, posterior lateral, and this is where we use it to uh, do not tire. And look, here the message. When, this is one of the very important follow-up of the clinic. You should have Good firing with the muscle full extension. I have seen a lot of patients uh, doing ACL and come to me after the surgery. They did 40 session, 50 session, and they have extension loss. Five degrees, three degrees, ten degrees. Someone in our division, 35 degrees. So what we do early in the clinic, by myself, do full extension, firing, and look here. This is. Six days after the operation. Look, hyper extension in the normal side, hyper extension in the operating side. We don't accept only extension. We should have full extension. So if the patient has full extension, hyper extension, you should achieve it. Because very bad for the patient to have asymmetry. And look here. This is what we do during the operation. We tension the graft in a full extension. In full extension. Because if you do a 30 or 10 degree flexion, you should have been very, very anatomic. And I think, I don't think we are very, very, I do anatomic techniques, but I don't think we are so precise to achieve the normal anatomy of the patient, which we all of us know how complex is the ACL anatomy. So we do it in full extension because patient tolerate some laxity, but never tolerate loss of extension. Okay, now, Extra capsule to releases. I do it in hyperlaxity and revision cases in professional athletes. Um, now, this is another associated injury you see here posterior uh, uh, root. And we see it more common than before because we look for it. This is posterior root, and again, we should repair it. We use the same techniques as root repair. But here, this is important because you have two tunnels the SL tunnel and the root tunnel. We do extra tunnel lateral to the, to the tunnel for the ACL, and we pass the sutures, but not pass the sutures of repair, just temporarily, because we are more eager to catch it with the river of the ACL. So we make it more lateral for the uh, lateral discus, more medial for the medial discus, and this is the wound for the ACL. So we have to separate them, and here the root repair, you see. Now, uh, avoid injury to the cartilage. This is our technique in ACL. Uh, we have seen a lot of videos where the medial femoral component were damaged. So uh, our technique, how to use it? We, when we put the guide, because we work in anatomy, and look here, you see here the, the electrical guide. I uh, advise you to have it in your uh, hospital. Uh, when we do the anatomy. Uh, when we use the, remove the guide, 
it is uh, hitting the medial femoral condyle. So what we did notify that before removing the guide, we remove the wire, keep it inside the joint, plug it, plug it. We remove the wire, but keep it inside the joint. But when you remove it from the condyle, lateral condyle, so we have a free in, inside movement. You see here? Keep it up, but the guide go easily out. So you can try this. After that, we progress the wire to measuring and moving. When we use the lever, again, we use this trick. We use low profile lever. Go vertical with the condyle and by your hand, push it anterior and superior, not to injure the meniscus, not to injure the articular cartilage. You see? Start vertical from the skin, transverse, then vertical, push it more anterior, more inferior, away from the cartilage. Okay. So here by this technique you are safe. You use it during insertion and during the movement. You should see the lever when it's hitting in and when it's hitting out. Okay, now the same for you. Now this is I think we discussed that how to prevent metallic debris. We stop before and then do drilling. And after drilling, we, before we uh, leave the tunnel, we check for how anatomic we are. So when we get inside, we do range of motion to see the relation between the uh, lever or between the clip cutter and the notch, like here. Okay. You see? So it's those anatomic, we proceed. Now, graft handling protocol. Uh, we have protocol, no one touch the graft. We give it to one person always who do preparation of the graft. He didn't touch anything before. He with the graft, put it in this uh, antibiotic glue. And then when I finish preparation and go to take it, I change the blood. And even the missing blood, the mammal will not touch the, the finger. You see? And though even I don't touch the graft. I touch only the, the So this is very important. Since then, we have, alhamdulillah, from the uh, infection, steroid injection after two months of the bacteria, or normal So it's not So I think we can decrease the risk of infection. Extra fixation, advice to use this in all inside technique because I have two times, two times, when one of them was a professional player. When I do, when I do tensioning, fighting, the tight rope cut. So I, from that time, maybe the early in the learning field, maybe before eight years, with the, with the all inside techniques, From that time, I use the extra position. From that time. Because it happens once, and then after that happens another one, unfortunately, I have the same position. No problem, I tie it. Otherwise, you will revise the position. Take the graph out, prepare, and so on. So I advise to use this in all inside. Ligament injury, augmented repair. This is the most important, maybe, I shall tell you, in time. You see, we use it uh, for uh, augmented repair. When you repair ligament, it may fail. Look here, repair for the MCL, augmented repair. And here, this is a professional software player here from Jordan. He has almost each location, the MCL, complete avulsion of the uh, lateral collateral with the, with the hamstring, and I did augmented repair. Repair always ligament, if repairable, like medicines, repair. And augmented with the look here for augmentation. You can use either either synthetic graph, synthetic material, or you can use autograph. Why repair? Because it's complex anatomy. So if the tissue is repairable, repair. Whatever you do, you will not have the normal anatomy. Look, like here. Look for the insertion of the medial complex, MCL and the medial complex. Look, how you can replace all that by just simple reduce. So if you have repairable tissue, please repair and augment your repair to prevent failure. So why repair the question why to reconstruct if I have repairable tissue? What's the risk of repair? Failure. So the best is to do augmented repair. 
So the stress would be on the, on the uh, synthetic material or on the ground. So let's take this case. Uh, this is how we use it. You, you do repair and you pass it across it either by fiber tape or by ground, photograph. So the committed repair is of Greek benefit and multi-legal material. Let's take this case. Sharp of our left. Had a road traffic accident in dashboard around Sabah and a very complex posterior knee dislocation with patellar fracture. No hip or stability. What do you think? Conservative reconstruction. It is our uh, hip surgeon. Yeah. Open it. Is it? As easy as that. Look. Here the patient has a very unstable knee. This is inside. Just when you open the skin, this is the knee. Torn MCL, torn ACL, torn lateral collateral, everything torn, torn BCL. Ah. What we did, augmented repair for the medial side, augmented repair for the ACL, you see. We did repair the ACL and passed the fiber tape also. We did repair of the lateral side. We did not repair for the BCL, it was peripheral. But the question, how to keep the knee uh, central, not sublux posterior. So we used three fiber tape with the home as as if we are doing reconstruction, not not reconstruction. We were uh, afraid about operation, so we planned him for later PCR reconstruction. And look, look how we did when after passing the suture. You see how unstable is the knee, and we pass the suture here and fix it by the screws here. Uh, anchor, uh, not this anchor, and uh, enhancement by screw. Uh, this is the boss This is proximal syndesmotic bulge. This is very bad injury. And this is for BCL, this is for ACL, this is for Batilla, and so on. Now, look. Every control bed motion by yourself, not by the staff. The staff will assist you. You have to be careful about your patient. Every range of motion, you have to show, spend time with the patient. Look, after eight months, stable MCL, stable MCL, stable ACL. Uh, good range of motion, stable ACL, but some laxity PCL. Look, the patient goes to the gym, do exercise, he has excellent function, he is living normal without any limit to construction, and he said, I don't need PCL, you don't need this much. You see, this is important if you have repairable tissue, please, please repair. Like if you have repairable meniscus, please repair. No need for PCR Now we use the augmented repair technique in very complex uh, revision and primary knee after the test. Uh, I have uh, three MCL injury during the knee. No one I changed to hinge. I used my uh, experience in ligament reconstruction. One, we did reconstruction. One, uh, and two, we did augmented repair. The result is and primary injury. And even in revision, look, this is very bad. This is present to me after one month, the wound is not healing. She has done five process and skewer and so on. Uh, she fell down and has very this bad lateral combined fracture, uh, fracture dislocation. And you see, how can we reconstruct this very weak wall? Look, you climb on the hinge and the sole. But the hinge, you know, on the weak bone, all the stresses on the bone, every left interface, not on the ligament, so we have failure. So what to do? Again, augmented repair. Okay. Now look here, what we did inside the operation. Ah, the second point that this very weak anterior shell of the tibia tibia. Again, this needs protection. So what we did, we sutured the lateral collateral ligament by fiber tape. We fixed the fracture, and you see here the fracture, fracture fixed by wires, but this is weak to hold it. We pass the fiber tape through the bone fragment to the medial side, fiber tape. We make tension on implantation and the sutures, fiber tape very integrated with the bone cement. And so I don't need uh, constraint. We put for her rotating, uh, not hinge, rotating revision implant with the sleeve system I showed. The same for the patellar tendon. We were uh, afraid about the bulging. So we put this uh, suture behind the implant and pass the sutures and suture uh, the patellar tendon. So it will act as a term press. So this is, you see, it? we put the rotating one here, rotating, this is uh, the sleep system. And this is the 
way. Now, another case, look here. This is very good, ah, yes. So we have fiber material like here, and we have suture material like here, extending to the material of here. That is a curve. This is another complex septic loosening, polygon, and polygon septic septic for seed. Look, أي واحد بيعمل ريفيج ما بخاف من الأبالج؟ ها؟ Look, ما بخاف من الأبالج؟ وزنها مية خمسة وثلاثين. الآن what to do during the ريفيج surgery? We did the same technique. This is from the previous patient, but I show you the same technique. And we pass the sutures from behind and pass it suture. The patellar tendon and both figure of age to the quadriceps tendon. So all the tibia to get the same, and we were not aware about the body. This is, you see how thin, you see how thin is that? Okay. okay. But it's protected. So internal technique. Patellar instability, so I'm sorry, I'm going to kill you. My last step here, we're going to do the ascending construction. We're going to put in a bony chain, a line of rotation. So MBFL is a good option for traumatic cases when we don't have these changes. Uh, the technique, or if you know, is simple technique. Uh, very simple, you, you can uh, use the uh, gracilis or the graft, because you don't need larger graft. Use the uh, side of the plane, fix by anchors here to the patella and passing it inside, and then define the uh, femoral tunnel and so on. What we did modification. We have one case, only one case. But this is the point that when we have problem we saw it. We had one case, the uh, anchors in the patella, which it was weak bone, pull out. So what we did, we did EOS. We call it EOS, intra osseous synthetic shallow whatever the publication, cheap, effective, strong, like this. This is EOS, this is the patient behind me. This is the EOS, no anchors in the patella, and it's strong and cost effective, and this is important in our country. Cost effective. So we use two non absorbable passing sutures, and this provides strong fixation with no risk of pull out. Bain is so This is the graph, and this is the uh, suture. It's not clear here, unfortunately. But I can show you here the side operation, the same technique, define the portal and the tunnel and here passing the wire through the patella. You see, we pass the wire with a suture inside the patella and we pass another suture like the position of the anchors and after that we look, we test how stable is the graph, we pass it. It's like parachuting of the graph. You see, when we tension the suture, how strong. And now, we make small incision there on the other side, and we tie the suture. So this is an intra sling with no anchors. We have done, uh, I don't know the number exactly, maybe 50 cases. Alhamdulillah, we don't have any case of failure. Not because of technique only, because we deal with the associated presupposing factor. Look how it's strong, look. I, I would be worried if I got anchors to pull like this. Yeah? Um, okay, this is the patient. Six weeks. Okay. So, MBFL should not be done if there is body problem. This is patient, Surah Surah, and Batilla Alta, and the high femoral antiversion, and the high TTG distance. So, if you look the antiversion, so if you do MBFL, you need 100% it will fail. So, this patient, we did. The antiversion was 62, so we did correction by 47 to 45 degree rotation, and here the steps of rotational hysterectomy, and you see the difference. And we did uh, uh, tibia thread transfer and no MBFL. We didn't need MBFL. Look here the operation. Here another patient, patella alta, subluxation, dislocation. Recurrent many times, she has bulbous malalignment. Again, high energy distance, patella alta. And what we did, look, it's unstable before the operation. This is the incision for osteotomy. This is for tibia to bend transfer. So after we have checklist plan, we decide to do uh, distal femoral osteotomy and uh, tibia to bend transfer. And after that, test if need for patella uh, alta. And look here, after. 
this is the osteotomy. This is, we, we do the minimal invasive approach, okay? And this is after tibial to pelvic transfer. What do you think? Does she need to be able? No. And this is the patient after the operation. The alignment, the screws, and here no J sign, no subluxation. This is maybe the most interesting, uh, the most interesting case of particular dystrophy. I think we didn't do a similar case. This patient, severely complaining, Havana uh, she has chronic patellar subluxation. Patella is out. And recurrent dislocation, going more out. Okay? Uh, she's young, uh, unable to do anything since she's looking. She's unable because when she try more, the patella getting more out. So we reveal the axis of rotation. Look, she has antiversion high. She has only thing, not here. She has no alignment. External tibial torsion. Look, it's, it's from the side of the surgery, uh, the operation. Look to the antiversion about, about 48. The intercondylar, uh, intermilar was 70 something. The correction needed for the tibial torsion that was the social torsion. So what we did, this is the TTG was high after the abdominal machine. So in a high TTG, in a external tibial torsion, in a internal femoral torsion or high femoral tibial, what to do? Look inside of the uh, operation, look, the patella is dislocated. And if you go there, now, here, look, where is the patella? Look, the patella, that went one. This is the patella, not in the hoop, it's dislocated. So what we did, we did, Femoral correction of the rotation we see, first step, and then after that, we did this is supra tuber fill de rotational history. By this supra tuber fill, we did correct the rotation and break the tibial tuber fill internally. So we correct both. Look here to the video, look to the uh, extent of torsion, and here we define the degree uh, the, by, by millimeter. Because there's conversion معادلة بديش كل درجة الدوران فحسبنا ما بديش بألف أنا ما عندي هون غير زي فيها فحسبنا من كم ملي وبعدين عملنا الديوتيش لوك now now it's closing 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 and you see now how it's correct okay يلا إحنا زوم okay فالمسافة اللي حسبناها سكرناها الآن look to the correction and we, then we bought fixation, tone and fixation. So after that, we just, it was unstable, so we did MDFL, this is after MDFL. So we decided MDFL by the end, not by the end. So correct, so by conclusion for cartilage and ligament, be gentle with the cartilage, don't turn it. Oat is a good option when disease subchondral bone. Anatomic reduction is mandatory of articular fracture, and you can use arthroscopic assistive technique. Please take care of the alignment. ACL, in condral lesion, in meniscus, in everything, in patellar stability alignment, rotation, and surgical, axial, uh, coronal. Uh, knee ligament reconstruction needs experience and good knowledge of the anatomy and the precise techniques. Don't injure the cartilage during the procedure. Augmented repair is of great help, and I'll show you how it was very helpful. And MBFL should not be done alone in the presence of. Now, I have taken three cases on This is what we call it retractile fibrosis of the quadriceps. Adola, the Surya, the antibiotics, which I give the muscle. This is the is fibrosis. The stiffness, but the bathroom is not from the so in this case is what we do. We do all the parts of the slide and we go to the rectus here. Look after arthroscopy, nothing, nothing. Correction 5 dB only. So problem is not in the knee. So what we do, go out and go to the rectus here and achieve correction. So this is very important. My experience in these cases, I did. The first case was not cooperative, small, childish, or more camp. Uh, he was not cooperative and the results were bad because we Cheap, good friction, full friction, and no follow up and at home. The patient will move. So, our experience, second case, he presented to us, and we delayed the surgery three years. 
And before the surgery, Ammo entered the Ka'awan time, okay, we make sure the result will accept. And I just want to talk to you. She said, Okay, thank you all. Inshallah, shukra ilkum.